You know what's weird? No one seems to care about the first animal. And that's strange, because people like firsts. First president, first flight, first step on the moon. People like recording firsts. But animals, for all of their importance, are left off that list. And that's sort of sad, because I bet there's a lot of you wondering about the first animals. And you have wondered well, because the first animals are, all around, interesting, from their very appearance to the Earth they inhabited. Of course, they are also very old creatures, so firstly, we have to go back. Way back. Remember, for how many years you've been around, it's only been a blip in the tale of humanity. And that in itself is barely a blip in the history of life. So, as you wave goodbye to humanity, we begin to move at the speed of millions of years per second. The map of the Earth itself would change as continents clash into each other. About 60 to 200 million years ago, dinosaurs and other amazing reptiles ruled the Earth. Yet, even their more than 100 million year existence, if you viewed the history of Earth as a 24 hour clock, would last just about one minute. So we have to go even further back than them, before the supercontinent Pangaea formed, or even the first life on land, to an Earth so different that the atmosphere would be completely unbreathable. Welcome back to 541 million years into the past, at the beginning of the Cambrian period. Here we have a little something called the Cambrian Explosion. In the fossil record, a sudden boom of animal diversity showed up just about here. The creatures got numerous, complex, and maybe most notably, bizarre. Remember, this is 541 million years ago. There aren't any chickens or turtles or really vertebrates swimming around, but instead creatures like the lovable and huggable Opabinia, or even fan favorite Hallucigenia. But even here, more than 500 million years ago, is not where animal life starts. Yes, it may have been an explosion, but you still need a fuse to set off a bomb. There was a source before this. It's time to travel even further back, to Precambrian time. Just to get a little glimpse at the scale we are at now, the Precambrian lasted in between the creation of Earth to the Cambrian explosion, which is a time span of about, you know, 4 billion years. The scale of geologic time is so large at this point, we have to unpack some new units of measurement. It's not really adequate to use geological periods, or even geological eras. We've now moved on to eons, you heard right, eons. Once more to give some perspective, the most current eon that you and I live in is the Phanerozoic, which started with the Cambrian 541 million years ago. The three earlier eons were all in the Precambrian, each one in descending order having a more sinister name, with the Proterozoic being the closest to us, followed by the Archaean, and finally the Hadean which according to the internet, looked like this. Now, the first actual signs of life started in the Archean Eon, 3.7 billion years ago. The actual life forms can only be theorized, and their origins are another video for themselves, but it's probable they were bacteria who got nourishment from the hydrothermal vents of the ocean abyss. But from primordial stones in Greenland, we can find the first recorded organisms, Prepare yourselves for cyanobacteria, aka blue-green algae. Not exactly the most impressive of entities, I know, but they still took the first steps that every single living thing on Earth would take as well. No matter who you are, you have this blue hamster tube looking thing for being one of the first to inhabit the Earth. Cyanobacteria also leave behind interesting traces of their existence, being stromatolites. These stromatolites are the work of bacteria slowly building up layers and layers of minerals that get stuck together by the bacteria's adhesive compounds, forming these structures. Stromatolites still exist today, slowly being formed in places like Shark Bay, Australia. Just remember, life like this has existed unchanging for billions of years. Now, as much as I love praising cyanobacteria, they aren't exactly the first animals because they aren't animals, they're bacteria. So I know I'm asking a lot, but let's zoom forward a few billion years later. Now we're in the early Proterozoic Eon. Before this time, the Earth's ozone layer was so thin and oxygenless, only tough little prokaryotes could exist. But eventually, thanks to our heroes, cyanobacteria, who produce oxygen and dump it into our atmosphere, 
the first eukaryotes with cells similar to ours spawned in this new oxygenated world. The world was also really, really cold. Climate mishap had formed what would be known as Snowball Earth, where the whole globe was essentially permanently covered in an icy winter. Yet it is in these icy waters where the first animals would spawn. Gaze upon zoological genesis with the sponge. Indeed, before mammals or even reptiles, there was SpongeBob on a giant frozen snowball hurtling through space. Now, as much as sponges are amazing, they aren't. So let's move further on where the world gets a bit warmer in the Ediacaran period. It is here where the first animals will evolve into a select few forms in the Precambrian Ocean. I say ocean only, of course, because even though the seas might be tolerable, the land was still barren of any complex life, even of the comical tumbleweed. Another quick tip is most of these creatures are boneless. The collagen that would allow Cambrian life to have hard bodies and flourish into many different shapes was not there, leaving many very simplistic and not very mobile. Actually, most of them don't move, like at all. Take for example, Dickinsonia. This up to four foot wide oval had been incessantly debated on whether it was an animal or not, but a fossil showed this creature had cholesterol in his body, something only found in animals. Of course, it just barely counts as one. It's so primitive that it isn't even completely symmetrical, and you probably would mistake it for some sort of sea pancake, since all it does is just sit there. Once more, behold your ancestors. Some early creatures were so stationary they were basically just plants. Carnia was actually the first Precambrian fossil discovered, and looks and acts more like a fern than an animal. These plant-like creatures could also range in size greatly. The first specimen was just a few centimeters long, while other specimens could stand taller than a man. Phoenicia also looks like some alien plant, but it is in fact many worm-like creatures grouped together. You might actually have to blur this little picture, because although it doesn't look like it, Phoenicia might have been the first animals to sexually reproduce. Compared to these static, basic shapes, this creature, called a Spragina, doesn't grow any longer than 5 centimeters, but they are some revolutionary animals. They have a worm-like, segmented body, and what appears to be one of the first heads on Earth. This general body plan of a bilaterally symmetrical form with a head on one end will repeat for the next 600 million years on a vast majority of animals. Another precedent setter was the Kimberella. These animals might have acted as some of the world's first bottom feeders, crawling along shallow sea floors and grazing on colonies of microbes. And of course, some creatures from the Precambrian, in fact, still remain. You guessed it, the seemingly eternal jellyfish has been floating around, doing nothing, for a while. Trace fossils of narrow, line-like markings in the seabed reveal even back then there were still worms not dissimilar to some deep sea worms of today who burrow through ocean dirt. Along with these were other ancient creatures related to or resembling the sponge, sea pens, and sea anemones. Overall, it may not be a coral reef, but the Ediacaran ocean would be rife with environments like this, of seemingly simplistic, yet almost alien life forms. So that's some of the first animals. Maybe not exactly awesome creatures, but certainly the first. Another reason people document the first of whatever is because that they will have traits that show in the second, and the third, and on and on. The same with these first creatures. They will be the blueprints that all animal life will follow. Thanks for watching. I hope you can tell, but I've upgraded my audio equipment recently, so I hope this one sounds better than any former videos. Although I researched pretty thoroughly, I have this gut feeling I got some tiny things wrong. Uh, so if you are a Precambrian expert and have any corrections, post it down below. As always, thanks for the pictures and footage I used to make this. Thank you for watching till the end. See ya.